So this is an M4 A3 76W HVSS, which is affectionately referred to as an easy tank. Each component of that means something. Uh, M4 is the Sherman, the tank medium Sherman, uh, originally designed in the late 1930s, approved for use in 1940. Uh, at the beginning of World War II, the US had less than 500 tanks total. By the end of World War II, they had made 49,500 of just the Sherman. That just showcased our production capability. Uh, there's small changes throughout. This is a welded hull as opposed to a cast hull, but you have an effective armor thickness on the front of about four inches. In the turret, it's about three. On the bottom, it's about an inch and a half. This, of course, has the wider track, which I will get to in a minute. So, M4, A3, this is an A3 Sherman, so that means it has the Ford GAA engine. It was originally started as a V12 engine for the P51 Mustang, about 1,200 horsepower. That unfortunately went to Rolls-Royce Merlin instead, so they just kind of had this design laying around, and originally tanks had radial engines. They started with the R975. Uh, about 500 horsepower, 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. So they need something similar because they realize it's a lot harder to change a bomber or a fighter than it is to change a tank. So Ford said, well, if we take this V12 and we lock four cylinders off the end of it and make it a V8, it's about 500 horsepower, 1,000 foot-pounds. That should do fine. They ended up making more of that engine compared to any other engine. Uh, throughout the war. So this has a Ford GAA. Uh, they had R975s. That's what a couple of those tanks over there are. Uh, there's a twin diesel as well. Twin 671, so it's two parallel to a common drive shaft. You start each engine independently. And then eventually there was an A4 that had a multi-bank. It was five Chrysler engines arranged in a, a, uh, arranged in a circle. You want to talk about a complex tank. That's extremely complex. Tank. The GAA is an extremely reliable engine. We're very happy with it. This one's been rebuilt, so it's practically brand new. So M4 A3 76. We are sporting the 76 millimeter high velocity anti-tank cannon. Uh, particularly, this is an M1A2. Originally, they would be M1A1s. It fires a 15 pound projectile at about 2,500 feet per second, depending on the load. And then eventually, later on, they developed a high velocity ammunition that was coming screaming out of the barrel at 3,900. And then 30 out six comes out the barrel. Uh, I want to say about five inches at a thousand yards as far as penetration cover. That's rolled homogenous armor plate. It's not just mild steel. It's some, it's some good solid piece of armor. 76 was originally adopted, I think it was 1943, something like that. While they generally didn't see much action in D-Day other than with the Commonwealth forces, uh, they did eventually make their way and they proved themselves very hard. Um, M4 A3 76W. So this is a wet stowage for ammunition. Originally they had dry stowage, they were stored in the sponsons, the sides of the tank. It was susceptible to side penetrations and would cause the tank to burn. Hence the Tommy Cooker nickname that they were given by the British. Uh, so instead they took the ammunition, they brought it inside underneath the turret floor, and they surrounded it with an ethylene glycol water mixture black, essentially antifreeze. And if you did penetrate all the way through the hull into that ammunition storage area, the ethylene glycol bladder would pop, surround the ammunition with that liquid material, and it would reduce or it would increase the cool or the cook-off temperature. So that way it would prevent a fire from the vehicle. By the end of the war, you were 90% survivability rate out of these vehicles. And 90% ready rate as well. Uh, these vehicles are were built to be serviced in the field. So you can see we have multiple bolt holes, everything can be taken off. Uh, you can actually remove the transmission cover and replace it in, I think it's, according to the manual, five hours. An engine comes in about eight. I'm taking it out and replacing it with a new one. Everything is, I don't want to call it modular, but it is readily field serviceable. Or M4A376W HVSS. If you want to come around to the side here, I will talk about the horizontal volume spring suspension. That's what HV, HVSS stands for. Originally, Shermans were built with vertical volume spring suspension. A volume spring Spring is this spring right here. It's coiled up. It looks like a cinnamon roll and it acts transversely across itself as opposed to a coil spring which acts in a bending direction. Or I guess it'd be a torsion direction. So they made them bigger, oriented them horizontally, made bigger bogies, and they added wider track. Now of course the purpose of the wider track is you reduce ground pressure. The original uh, VVSS tanks had about, I want to say, 18 PSI of ground pressure. It's about the same as what your two feet are. This is about 12 PSI now. 
So they go from a, I want to say it's a 16 and a quarter inch wide track. Now this is like 20, nearly 22 inches wide. So it reduces the ground pressure, makes it much easier to kind of float over mud, snow, rough terrain. Uh, the HVSS, each, each bogey pair operates on a different axis. So it presents a much smoother ride, but more importantly, it's a much more stable gun platform. So the Sherman was unique in the fact that we had a vertical uh, gyroscopic stabilizer in the gun. We could fire, moving generally at a slow pace. Germans, Soviet tanks had to come to a complete stop in order to guarantee a first hit. We had that advantage compared to everybody else. That's pretty much it. That's the whole story of the tank.